Director Richard Quine was specifically chosen to direct Pushover because the studio believed, having been an actor himself, he'd show special sensitivity to Kim Novak in her first movie role. Quine was 33 years old when he directed this picture, with a number of films, mostly comedies, already under his belt. In his younger days, he'd been a dancing and goofing sidekick to his pal Mickey Rooney, and before making Pushover, he'd guided Rooney through one of his finest dramatic performances in the terrific Drive a Crooked Road. These two pictures were Quine's only forays into film noir, but his personal life had more than its share of darkness. In 1943, Quine had married Susan Peters, one of the most promising young actresses in Hollywood. On a New Year's Day hunting trip in 1945, Peters' rifle accidentally discharged, and the bullet shattered her spine and left her paralyzed below the waist. And despite the couple's gallant efforts to overcome this tragedy, Peters even starred, confined to a wheelchair in The Sign of the Ram, their marriage fell apart. They divorced in 1948, and Peters steadily deteriorated, essentially starving herself to death in 1952. Although Quine said he would always be haunted by the accident and Peters' tragic fate, he carved out a reputation for making lively comedies, many in collaboration with writer Blake Edwards. He reunited with Kim Novak in 1958 for the big hit Bell, Book, and Candle, and it was during its production the director and actress began a love affair. Despite Quine still being married, though separated, to his second wife, Barbara Bushman. By the time Quine and Novak made their third picture together, 1960's Strangers When We Meet, Quine's masterpiece in my opinion, he divorced Bushman and he and Novak were engaged. Columbia Pictures intended to make a wedding present of the fabulous experimental house in Malibu that it had built for the film. But Novak, always fighting to be her own person, felt unduly pressured, and she backed out. She and Quine would make another picture together, The Notorious Landlady, in 1962, but their relationship was over. Now, he'd have romances with other actresses he directed, notably Judy Holliday, Natalie Wood, and Fran Jeffries, to whom he was married for five years. It appeared he'd finally found stability with his fourth wife, Diana Balfour, whom he was married to for 12 years. But in 1989, Quine committed suicide in their Beverly Hills home, shooting himself with a hunting rifle in a manner eerily like the incident that crippled Susan Peters. Okay, I don't wanna end on such a down note, so let me tell you a quick story about my own experience with Kim Novak. I had the pleasure of spending time with her on the final TCM Classic movie cruise in 2016, during which Kim delighted a couple of packed houses with tales from her career and heartfelt revelations about her personal life. Now, over the years, Kim has gotten tagged with a reputation for being difficult, but I can attest that this comes not from any sort of arrogance or ego, but more from an incredibly sensitive and often insecure nature. She doesn't want to disappoint anybody especially herself. There's an honesty and truthfulness about Kim that's rare among actors, most of whom never let you see their real selves. Okay, given all that, I was dying to ask Kim about pushover, in particular, her costuming, which despite the vigilance of the production code, didn't leave much to the imagination. And I have to tell you, no matter how relaxed and comfortable you may get with an interview subject, you never lose the fear that the wrong question might turn them against you. So I needed to make sure my eyes weren't deceiving me when she doffs her coat in that first scene in Fred McMurray's apartment. So I sheepishly asked, am I mistaken or were you not wearing a brassiere in that scene? And Kim didn't bat an eye. Honey, I never wore a bra, ever. So there you go, movie magic. Now, next week on Noir Alley, I'll be presenting a film that for decades had vanished from circulation, despite being the best adaptation of an Ernest Hemingway novel ever. Thankfully, it's been restored, revived, and rediscovered. And if you haven't seen The Breaking Point, you're in for an unforgettable experience. Until then, keep up the conversation on our Noir Alley Facebook page and Twitter feed. And hey, I may not get the money, and I may not get the woman, but in Noir Alley, I can always get the drink. See you next week. <laughs>